In today's video, I'm going to show you how I run an outlet to my new drop zone. What's a drop zone, you ask? I'll answer that coming up. Welcome to Handy Dad TV. I'm Chris Heider, your virtual dad in the cloud. And I'm in my new house, and, and this is my garage, which is basically everything that was in my shop, or most things, was moved to here. But we're not talking about my garage today. What we are gonna be talking about is putting an outlet in my drop zone. Now, the drop zone, a drop zone is typically a space when you come in your garage door, there'd be cabinets right here, and we don't have one. It was an option when this house was built and the previous owner didn't. Oh my God. Really? Go lay down. So I'm gonna be installing cabinets here, lower cabinets as well as upper cabinets because it's gonna obviously give us some more storage, but it's also just a convenient place to drop your keys, your wallet, your handbag, whatever you need to so that it's out of the way and not taking up space in the kitchen, like all that stuff over there. But the thing is, there's no outlet here. There's a little one there, but um, that's not gonna be convenient for us to charge phones and things like that. So we really want an outlet here. In addition, I'm going to be putting upper cabinets here. So I want to put an outlet on top of the cabinet that I can plug in a transformer for the under cabinet lights. So that's what I'm gonna work on today. Now I've got a couple choices. One is to take power from this outlet here and run a wire through the wall or through that pantry cabinet there and, and bring it down. I really want the outlet like right here, right above the countertop. But I have another alternative. Inside the garage, there's an outlet over here. And I believe they're on the same circuit, so it really doesn't matter. And I'm not talking about putting anything with, you know, any kind of high current draw anyway. So it's really not gonna be, it's just for convenience. So I'm thinking the easiest thing to do is to take power from this one, run it down around where my cabinets are gonna be and up to the new one. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is determine which breaker this is. So that little light is great, but in order to work by myself, I just need to plug in a fan and that'll help me figure it out. That's the one right here. And I pulled out this GFI, the power is off, and I can see that there is power coming into it and out of it. So this GFI is protecting another outlet, what I'll call downstream. And most likely it is the one on the other side over there because that one is dead too. So my workbench here is dead. And I measured on the outside from the door frame over and that outlet is right about here in the uh, garage. So what I'm gonna do is just use my stud finder. Okay, so the stud is on this side of the outlet. So this is a hollow cavity here, hollow except for the, the insulation. So all I have to do is bring the wire out of the wall somewhere down there where it'll be hidden by the cabinets. that is right here. This really was a futile effort to work by myself. I had to get help. Would you come and give me a hand real quick? Just go in the garage. You'll see the fish tape in that that box there. Mm -hmm. Just pull on a little, little bit and I'll, I'll tell you when to push. Okay, push it back down. Okay, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Push. Hang on, hang on, I'm getting it. Okay, push, push, push. Good, got it, thank you. the wire. I just got to get it out. 
plenty of slack here. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, now I've got my power feed coming in. Now remember there's gonna be base cabinets here that are gonna hide this wire. I'm gonna bring it around the wall and then I'm gonna put another hole here, bring it up to about there is where I'm gonna put the, the other outlet. This is the top of the countertop. That's the bottom of the cabinets up top. And then I'm gonna run another one all the way up top there. Now for here, I'm gonna use an old work box and I've marked the bottom and the center and uh, I'm just gonna hold it here, level it, and then mark it. And to minimize the mess, I'm just gonna use a utility knife to cut this out. Not only does it minimize the mess using a utility knife, but it also prevents me from ever digging into any wires that might be in the wall, any wires or, or uh, pipes. That's what I was just feeling for, to make sure there was nothing in the wall there. And there isn't. Now my trick to doing that so easily, it's not really a trick, I used the stud finder and figured out the stud was right here. So I put my hole right next to the stud and when I feed the fish tape, I feed it along the stud and it always comes out, well, usually comes out by the hole unless I miss it and it goes beyond. I love these um, quick strippers, wire strippers. They're really easy to use, and I've recommended them several times in several of my videos. I'll put a link to them in the video description below. If you don't like stripping wires, this makes it trivial. Now for this outlet, because it's a drop zone, we're probably gonna to wanna to charge USB devices. So I'm gonna put in one of these outlets that has two USB devices automatically right into it. So we don't have to take up the outlets with those big charger things. So this has the hot and the white. So the hot is the black and the white obviously is white. And they always use a brass screw, which is dark for black. And then the chrome screw, which is light for white. Now on the bottom is the green screw, which is the ground, but you're not allowed to connect both grounds. You're not allowed to connect two wires there, but I can connect two wires to the other ones. You can see there's holes in the back. So for that, we need to create a pigtail. And to create a pigtail, you could use a regular wire nut, but I'm using one of these press-in wire nuts. I just take a length of wire and connect the other two. And after I insert them, I give them a tug, make sure they're good and tight, and then I can put that out of the way. Okay, that's good. And then the two hots are gonna go on this side. Let me open this up a little bit more.
Give them a tug. And they're good. Okay. Now on top of the cabinets, this is not gonna be visible, so I didn't take the time to put a real outlet inside the wall, so I'm just using this utility outlet here. And before I close it up, I wanted you to see what I'm doing is I wired that with an Insteon outlet. And that way I can use Insteon Home Automation, which is what I choose to use in my house, that will turn on and off my cabinet lights. All right, now that I've got the outlets connected, the only thing I need to do now is connect this to the GFI and then put it back, uh, turn on the breaker. I think it'd be impossible for me to let you see inside here because I'd have to wear a helmet cam or something like that, which I'm not gonna do. But I've already got a, a wire nut here with the grounds on it, so I'm just gonna put this one on that same wire nut. Ground is done, push that out of the way. Now I have a choice to make. Do I want to put this on the load side or the line side? If I put it on the line side, my outlets will not be protected by this GFI. If I put it on the load side, they will be protected. So I'm actually going to put them on the load side. And these devices are made for two wires to go on every screw, so I don't have to worry about pigtails. All right, let's turn on the breaker. Uh, it was this breaker here. And I take my little tester. And I have two green. That indicates it's wired correctly. This one has two greens as well. I'm assuming that one will too. I'll try that on a ladder. Well, I know this doesn't look really good for now, but it'll eventually have cabinets here and they'll cover that up. That's the next step. Eventually. So coming in from the other direction, this is the finished drop zone. You can see the cabinets installed down the bottom, the countertop and the uppers with a nice wine rack. In fact, this is where we keep our Alcohol, we call this our drink and drop zone actually. And uh, the outlets work great. This is where we charge phones and things like that. That's a nightlight plugged in there. And I even have the transformer up top and the under cabinet light works too. So those lights are gonna be in a separate video. But you can see this is exactly what I was planning it to be. Now I know some people are gonna give me a hard time with the fact that that wire runs behind these cabinets but really there's, there's no problem with it. It is safe, nothing can happen to it. Just because it's not embedded in a wall doesn't mean that it's against code. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Welcome home. Be sure to subscribe and watch our new series, The Living Flip. Ooh. <laughs>